Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to apply a nice gloss finish with a brush. So as usual, since most of my viewers uh, watch my stuff for guitar related matters, I'm going to be demonstrating this on a guitar. The top of this is just finely sanded raw wood, sanded down to 600 grit. These techniques also work on pretty much any wood surface and, and any surface that this material will bond to. So it works fine on guitars, it works fine on furniture. If you have a painted surface, you need to test this first in a, an area that's hard to see because there's a possibility that when you go to brush your finish on, it'll heat up the paint that's already on there. And by heat up, I mean basically melt uh, and cause it to streak and move around and possibly come off in areas. So be careful about that. Make sure you're testing it before you do it. What I'm going to be using for a finish today is the Verithane Fast Drying Professional Gloss. It's number 900, clear finish. It is an oil-based paint, which means a couple things. One, when you put it on the wood, it is going to have a darkening effect. It's not going to go on crystal clear. Uh, if you want to do that, you're going to need to use a water-based finish pretty much. And two, it dries relatively slowly. I know it says fast drying. That's relative. It's fast drying for oil base. You can put probably three coats of this stuff on in one day, um, but it is not a fast drying finish as in the grand scheme of finishing. Like I said, we're going to be using a brush. I'm just using a simple two inch brush, uh, which is not the best for something this size. Obviously, broader surface, you're going to want to use a broader brush, but I purchased the brush for a smaller project and I didn't want to buy another one because they're kind of expensive. Uh, you need a natural bristle brush for this stuff. That's what they recommend, pure bristle. So yeah, they're a little bit pricey. Uh, up in Canada at Home Depot, this one was about $15. Um, and the quart of finish was around 20. So I'm going to bring the camera in closer and you can kind of see how I do this. It's pretty straightforward. I highly recommend that you wear a respirator or something with a fume filter on it while you do this. Um, it is an oil-based finish. It is solvent in there and uh, health tip, you probably don't want to breathe it in. Also, you're going to need some Varsol or paint thinner or mineral spirits or something like that to clean your brush, particularly if you don't have a bunch of excess money cleaning your brushes, you can make them last a long time. Uh, and if you let it go even once, your brush is going to be pretty much useless. All right, let's get this guy opened up and ready to go. And a little trick for you here, uh, when you take paint out of your quart, it tends to get into this area where the lid seals. So if you go in at the lowest part of that, your low spot where the paint tends to pool uh, and you don't want your paint to stay in there, what you can do is just take a small screwdriver like this, or better yet, an awl if you have one, and just make a few holes. And I like to do four of them. Uh, personally, just to make things go quicker when it's draining. But you should really be able to get away with one, assuming your paint can's level. And then make four holes there so that the excess paint just kind of drains through that back into the can. Uh, and the lid seals kind of around the outside of that, so it really shouldn't cause you any problems with paint drying in the can. Now this stuff needs to be stirred. You don't shake it. Just take your... Uh, your stir stick and make sure that it's stirred up relatively well. This quart in particular is basically brand new. I bought it this morning. So that's why I didn't have the holes in it. And that's why I'm not spending a lot of time stirring it. If it's been sitting for a while, you'll need to stir it for longer. And if you're using it for a long period of time on a larger surface, you'll need to use it to stir it for um, periodically while you're doing that, sorry. The idea here is to kind of brush it on in long strokes. This stuff doesn't dry super fast. Like I said, it's oil-based, so you do have some open time. You've got some time to work with it. It's not like putting on a lacquer, but still, apply it in long strokes, and then you can brush out any problems after. So for that reason, we want to load up probably a fair bit of the brush here. I do about an inch at the bottom, and then I can put a nice long stroke of paint on there and get most of the guitar. If you are, I, I'm not particularly fantastic at applying paint with a brush, I'll be honest with you. Um, so 
my tutorial here isn't so much about the brushing technique itself as it is about the other parts of the procedure to get this finish. Luckily, this stuff is fairly easy. Again, it's not, it's not a big deal for the long stroke part. It's not like if you're applying a lacquer finish, um, but it is helpful if you can avoid going over it, you know, an absurd number of times. But if you need to, you can. You can brush the bubbles out. You don't really have to tip off like you would with an, uh, a lacquer finish. You can apply this stuff a little bit heavier and it kind of tends to self-level. So really it's a fairly easy thing to work with. And I'm going to try and apply three, or two or three coats here. We'll see how the first one dries. Uh, if the first one's drying fairly glossy, what I'll do is just go back, scuff it lightly after it's dry, and put on my second coat. If it's not drying glossy, then I won't do that. I will, well, I will. I'll scuff it lightly, put on my second coat, and then I'll apply a third after. All right, guys, so here's what we're dealing with after one coat. The coat is still wet, so it's not going to look quite this shiny when it dries, but that's all right. When we put our second one on and go through and polish it, we'll be able to get this effect back. So we'll get that nice wet look again before we're done. Looks pretty good so far though. Uh, you may have seen me apply wipe on poly in previous um, videos this brush on stuff goes on much thicker so it's kind of it's a thicker finish but it is easier to get a gloss out of something like that so you'll notice that this is actually a very very simple way to achieve that kind of glossy look if you don't have spray equipment so we'll let that dry for a while and then we'll come back and go in for our second coat Well guys, it's been a couple hours now since I applied the first coat and I've had kind of a change of heart about how I'm going to approach this because the first coat just looks so good. Uh, you definitely have the option to let your first coat dry fully, sand it back and then apply your second coat and you're pretty much guaranteed at that point that you're applying it over a smooth surface because of the way this stuff builds. So if you sand it flat, throw in your second coat, you should be 100% good to go. This has only been drying for about two hours. It's definitely not ready to sand, but it is ready for another coat at this point. And it's looking awesome. It's looking nice and smooth. So I'm actually not really concerned about any of that. What I'm gonna do is apply my second coat. I'm gonna let that dry fully for a few days. And then I'm gonna go in and do my sand and polish if it looks like it needs it. Or maybe I'll do it anyway, just so you guys can see how that's done. If you haven't already seen some of my polishing videos, uh, but it is the same as my other polishing videos. so really not going to be anything new for most of you. So that being said, I'm going to bring you in closer here, give you a look at how this looks now, and then we'll throw on our second coat. So here's what we're looking at right now from our partially dried, or pretty much dried, first coat. So it's not as glossy as it was when I first put it on because it has now dried. It doesn't have that wet look anymore, but we will be able to rectify that by adding our second coat, possibly a third to get a nice build on there, and then doing our polishing if it's necessary. So let's get to it, shall we?
All right, guys, sorry for the added background noise here. I got the compressor running. I've got my two coats on here now, brushed on, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. So if you look, see, see how, uh, how good an image we can get there. That's after your two coats, brushed on gloss. It's got some imperfections in it, but it is real shiny. So if you are happy with that, if you're happy after that with a couple imperfections in there, maybe a little bit of dust, depending on what environment you're in, it's quite dusty in here, uh, then so be it. You can leave it like that. And that is how you brush on, you know, a high gloss finish. If you're not happy with that and you want to get those imperfections out of there and try and go for more of like the perfect factory mirror finish, then you need to, you need to go through the polishing process. Um, you can do it by hand. I'm not going to, I'm going to just quickly use some, some pneumatic tools to get it done. But what you do is you sand it down. I would start with probably 800 grit until it's all perfectly flat and smooth. And then you bump up to, you know, probably 1500, 2000, 2500, and you go pretty much as high as you can. Those later grits should not take as long and uh, yeah, work your way up. And the higher the grit you get to, the easier it'll be to polish. And then you can polish by hand as well. You just need a nice lint-free cloth, maybe a t-shirt that's been through the uh, washing machine many times, or uh, one of those Shine-X cloths that you use for cleaning like sunglasses or glass and stuff like that. That and some polish, and you rub it in there real good. You're probably gonna wanna start with a compound and then move on to a polish afterward. So I'm gonna start by sanding this down using my pneumatic dual action orbital. And then I will go in with my pneumatic rotary polisher and some Norton liquid ice polish slash compound. It's a single stage, so I don't need to use several different products for it. And sand it smooth, polish it up, and then you can see what it looks like when I'm done. All right guys, so that's about it. As with anything, uh, you kind of get out of this what you put in. So that was just a couple quick coats brushed on. I sanded it real fast and you know, gave it a light polish. You can go further. You can be more careful about your sanding. You can do more passes with your polisher. If you're gonna you know, really go into the full like careful sanding process, you probably want to put on a third coat. But even with just that quick little process, because this stuff goes on fairly thick, You've now seen that, you know, there are some imperfections in here, but you can get a pretty passable gloss, a beautiful gloss, in fact, 
just by brushing it on and then polishing it out. And if I had put on another coat and sanded it a little further, we could have made this absolutely perfect. I hope you guys liked the video uh, and that it was hopefully useful if you're planning on you know, brushing a gloss finish onto something anytime in the near future or the distant future. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get to them. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Uh, that would be great so that it is easier for other people to find. I'm trying to spread this information around, so every bit helps. And uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.